Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon. I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And she is going to review a kid's guide to fandom. This is a follow-up to a video we did yesterday mm -hmm. uh, talking about an article talking about a book that teaches kids how to be fans and how to avoid toxic fans. Right, but that's not what the book's about. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna talk about that because the article that NPR put out there, the original title was actually how kids can avoid toxic fandom. That when you sent it to me, that's what it said. That's what it said. And then they had changed it. I think their editor went in on NPR and said, uh, fandom can be a lot like high school. Here's how to avoid the bad stuff. But that's not even what it talks about. No. It's not what the book talks about at all. Um, actually, when you go to, to the book, the actual book, which I went and got it on Kindle and I pay, paid for the book, um, and I look through it, and it's not. It's basically basically what it says. Exploring the different elements of fandom from fan fiction, cosplay, gaming, podcasting, um, and that kind of stuff. That's what it's about. It's basically, uh, here's what these terms mean. Here's the different types of fandoms that you know people might be want to be. You might want to be involved in web comics or podcasting or going to conventions or whatever. Here's how you can be one that does it, or you can be somebody who wants to help somebody do this stuff. Um, ask your your uh, um, older family members for you know for help to do things like don't go do it yourself. Yeah. There's even sections on there that are talking about. Um, when you join a group, you know, or you're starting your own group to understand that, you know, people are allowed to have different opinions than you. So like chapter five, they're talking about, so say we all. It said, talking about being part of a community of like-minded people, they're people who get you and your passions. They like the same movies, games, books, or combinations of things as you. You'll have plenty to talk about. Even though you have a lot in common, it is always good to remember that your points of view and opinions are yours and others will have their own thoughts as well. When you join a starter community, ask the members lots of questions to be open to learn learning what others like and enjoy about the things you love. They're bound to have different perspectives because of their unique life experiences. And these new perspectives from others often enrich your fandoms and help you enjoy them in new ways. It actually talks about how when you join a fandom, other people might be, have different opinions than you. And basically, don't go in there and be an asshole in, in a nicer way of saying it. So basically, not, what they're saying is the same thing that we kind of say. Um, I don't know where NPR got this idea. Yeah, this is look, and again, I you know we want to point out this is a, this is a kind of the, the thread that runs through a lot of the stuff that we talk about in regards to fandom and toxic fandom and the media. The media brings their bias to a, a piece of work, and uh, what they do is they become. You want to talk about gatekeeping because mm -hmm. this article talked a lot about gatekeeping. You want to talk about gatekeeping? The media is basically like you have to be this kind of fan. And if you're not, you're toxic. And they took this book, which is pretty middle of the road. Yeah, it's basically like a, a, a explanation for kids about what fandom is, you know, what ways you can join fandoms. It, it, it really is not a bad book at all. I mean, I would have bought this for my kids. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, for what you showed me, it was very, again, they used this book as a weapon to gatekeep fans they didn't like. Because the original premise of this article was that uh, you need to keep kids away from toxic fandoms. And uh, the implication being that old school fans, uh, old school fans were the ones that were gatekeeping. And uh, here's a guide how to keep your kids away from this. Toxic man babies. And here's the thing, you know, I stand by most of the other video, which is there's a lot of toxicity in fandoms. And a lot of times it's these younger people coming into it. Um, because they're listening to the media. Uh, they're going in there and they find the group people who agree with their opinions who are telling them, well, you have to tunnel vision yourself and only, only block everyone who disagrees with you. And you have to go out there and actively tell those people that they're terrible people. Um, so it, 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 it's basically indoctrination. So this basically is telling kids, you know, what it is, you know, and, and, and I think parents, you know, it's telling kids, to, you know, talk to their adult family member or older family members. Because, you know, sometimes it's not your parents, it's your grandparents, yeah. it's a sister, you know, whoever, you know, is your guardian. And um, they, they talk to them and make sure they help you with things, make sure that they check things for you, make sure that they're watching for comments, things like that. And they, But they do talk a lot about, one thing they talk a lot about is Star Wars. And the people they talk to for that that are examples of, of different people in the different areas of fandom um almost everyone when they ask them what their fandom the original fandom was or what inspired them the most it's almost always star wars and it's almost always classic star wars yeah. they talk about club jade which is mar jade they mm -hmm. talk about stuff like that now they do put in there about 
We're talking about fan fiction. They bring up the, the Star Trek women writers in the 70s. You know, I think that's yeah. where we get the, you know, the Mary that's Sue That's where the Mary from. Sue came from, yeah. Um, yeah. They do bring up some feminist-type things in, um, in commentary, but that's like, you know, side things. But it's really, you know... It's just basically how to join fandoms, how to keep yourself safe. Like, I mean, not in the way that, you know, they, they kind of led you to believe. But I think maybe, maybe if kids got, you know, these books and more parents or guardians, adult guardians were involved, you wouldn't have these little shits running around calling everybody names and, and deliberately trying to gatekeep everything. Uh, because the whole point of this, like, here's a list. You're talking about this. I was going to bring this up, but you have that. Do be welcoming, welcoming to people and their feedback and contributions. Do be open-minded and curious. Do be respectful. Do be kind and positive. I agree with all this stuff so far. Do be encouraging. Do be enthusiastic and generous. Don't be a gatekeeper. Don't be a dictator. Don't be rude when you don't understand something. Don't have unfair expectations of community members. We're on the same page here. Uh, yeah, and again, just to show you what the media did, okay? Uh, and I think this article is actually written by somebody at Penn State, and it's on NPR because it's WPSU. I saw that was Penn State. I was like, huh. Yeah, so they probably took a, a long uh, conversation with the author of the book, and the snippet they got was nobody gets to decide who a real fan is, and just talked about an anecdote. Which I agree with. An anecdote that she had about her Star Wars tattoo, which could have been a very, very tiny piece of a much larger conversation, and they took it because their their point was teaching kids how to avoid toxic fandoms, and the default is the toxic fandoms are the old school fans. Or pretty much, yeah, teaching your kids how to, you know, yeah. And the whole thing is. That's not what the book's about. It's no. legitimately just a breakdown of what terms mean you might hear in fandoms. They have a glossary of terms for kids. Um, it's talking about different things like what's a fan fiction? What's a podcast? How do you do web comics? You know, where are some good places I can put web comics? Um, there, and like I said, there's section, they have these Ready Player Two sections. Basically, if you're, have, you have friends that want to help you, here are some things that you can do to, to support somebody who wants to do this or whatever. It's not a bad book at all. I mean, I would have bought this for my kids. I think if more kids, I mean, I'm sure if I went through every point, I skimmed it mostly, but I did read a lot of it. And I'm sure, you know, you're going to find some things in there you might get mad about. But for the most part, I don't think it's bad. I think more kids should read this book because maybe if they did, they wouldn't be, you wouldn't see these people as attacking everybody like they're on Twitter. I think they're going in and they're finding people that are like-minded and the ones that, that you know, are going to like come, come for them first. Well, don't listen to those people. They're old people. They're old. It's, yeah. uh, it's our thing now. We need to get rid of them because they're trying yep. to keep you out. And yep. that's not what's going on. No. It hasn't been that way for years. It's only been recently that we've seen this. And it's mostly with the younger people coming in. This book is actually pretty fair, guys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to, and we said we review it and let you know. If it was crap, I'd tell you. I'm not going to say it's crap because it's not. Yeah, so that was that was uh, I guess a, a pleasant surprise because usually you know we're like oh god it was worse than we thought but no in this case it actually seemed like a pretty fair it was good it had good you know, points in it yeah yeah it had good history lessons in it. it like I said a lot of people they they interviewed talked about why they got into you know doing art why they got into podcasting whatever and they had you know I I did this because I like Sailor Moon or I did this because I like Star Wars a lot of it was classic Star Wars um it's not a bad book. At all. And I don't see, there's, and they don't talk about avoiding toxic fandoms. It talks about how you can join a fandom and basically, you know, not be the toxic shit in the fandom in a nice way. Yeah. It, 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 it's about getting along. It's, 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 it's so funny because we're all on the same page. Like, this is what most of us, uh, you know, say, too. It's that everybody's so busy trying to see, where are you politically? And how can I, you know, shit yeah, on you? Yeah. And, you know, you're a terrible person because you don't like prom. And, and and everybody's trying to nitpick everything. But if you actually sit and look at it, we're all on the same page. What I didn't see in this book, and I was very disappointed, were all the uh, hashtags you have to create to attack your adversaries. Right. No, they Twitter. don't tell you to do that. They no. say, be respectful and understand people. <laughs> You know, oh yeah, I do love this. And I agree with this. This is a very nice thing to, to add. Convention do's and don'ts. Do be mindful of how much space your costume takes up if you don't, you don't want your wings to knock people on their faces all day. As people who have set up at conventions, 
I like cosplayers a lot. Our daughter likes cosplay type things. I, I, I love their costumes. I love the work that goes into it. It's just really frustrating when they're always staying in front of your table with these big costumes and you're paying to be there and they just stand there and they're blocking you or they're knocking stuff off your table with their costumes and stuff. Yeah, don't do that. Don't put your stuff, especially drinks and food, on exhibitor tables while you're shopping. Thank you. We mm -hmm. have had so many missing drinks on our tables over the years. And then we had missing chips. We actually had... Yeah, that's a funny story. That was the other person next to us at the at the event. Ate our damn chips. We literally had a can of Pringles. <laughs> and we stuck it um, behind the table. It was hidden. People in the front couldn't see it. It was behind the, the, the rack of pillows that I had had. It was set back in. So the only way you can see it is if you were behind the table. And we left. Uh, and at that point, there was still a group that came in very late and caused us a lot of hassle when they set up. Um, on the other side of us that were still open because most everybody else had left. And when we came back the next day, because we covered everything up, you wouldn't know it unless you're back there. Our chips were gone. They literally left the can of empty chips where it was they and ate, ate all chips. damn Pringles. Don't eat your... So don't eat your neighbor's food. Don't eat your neighbor's unless chips. Unless they offer it to you, which is always very nice to offer. Um, they talk about different shows. I thought it was interesting to put packs in here. Um, Penny Arcade. What, yeah. yeah, the Penny Arcade show for a kid's book. I was kind of like, well, that's a little bit. Uh, what? Mm. Pe Penny Arcade, all their money comes from packs now from the convention. Like the webcomic and their YouTube channels kind of atrophied too. But They got um, in trouble for like, wasn't like, you know, a women there was some women issues oh yeah no they had uh they had a a, a controversy they had a comic strip about yeah, the dick wolves strip. the mm -hmm. dick wolves and then um, so i thought it was weird they used them yeah. as an example for kids <laughs> they must be friends oh, they, or something they also got they also got sued over strawberry shortcake because they made her like a, a gothy lolita or something and no. and uh yeah so that's, that's just funny but still uh, yeah i mean if i'm gonna be honest i told you guys i'd review the book and i'm gonna be honest with you I don't think it's a bad book. I think most of it is just about, you know, teaching kids, you know, what the different types of things are there are out there, things that they get into. And for a lot of kids who feel like they're struggling to belong, it's a fantastic book. I mean, I can totally see kids out there who are into stuff and maybe they, maybe kids in their class aren't into the same things. And they, they want to find people that, you know, outside their friend circle that maybe they could, you know, relate to or be, you know, could become a part of the group and go to events with and things like that. Um, I love how they always make sure that you ask your older, you know, uh, person, adult, guardian, whatever you want to say, um, you know, to, to do things for you to make sure it's safe, to, to go with you, you know, I'll have them go over what's okay and what's not okay, that kind of stuff. As a mom and a teacher, this book is done well. I don't know what they're talking about. And I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's crap when it's not. Because, you know, going by the article, I was so convinced it was going to be, oh, my God. And I still stand by what we said in the other video about there is a lot of toxic bullshit going on in fandoms. It is a lot often yeah. uh, younger people that are doing it. But beyond that, there are extremes on both sides. And the, and the toxicity is very small percentage of everyone. Yet everyone gets painted with a broad brush. But this book isn't part of the problem. No, no, it's it's not bad. Uh, from what I've seen, it's not bad. But again, again it's you actually know, a good book for part of the solution. Yeah, they actually had to change the title. The original title, and you you can find it by going to the page source, was "How Kids Can Avoid Toxic Fandoms." That's what you sent me originally. Yeah, and then they changed it because I think the editor was probably like, "No, no, no, it's pretty harsh." And then it turns out that they're using this book. But really, the author had like only a paragraph or two in the entire article, but the entire article was presented in such a way that fandom is toxic. Here's how you keep your kids away from the toxic man babies. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, not what it's about. No. Um, like I said, if you have kids, it's 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 a good, a good book. I think they run it from like, was it ages eight to like, or 12 and up, or eight to something like that, 14 you know. or something. I forget what the age range they say it's for. Um, but. You can buy it and feel free and it, it, it feel fine doing so. I didn't see anything wrong with it. Like I said, if you read every word, word for word, you maybe you might find something that might be upset. I know they have a lot of, like I said in their examples, they have some feminist type stuff in there. But it wasn't anything that wasn't true. And it wasn't anything that was like really far off. Um, I don't see a problem with it. I think it's fine. I think it, it, it explains to kids what what's what. And, you know, maybe they want to be interested in something. And like I said, especially now, there's, kids feel mo so isolated all the time. I don't think this is a bad thing. I, I don't know why they thought it was. I just want to make sure that we make that very clear. I don't think they read the book. I think they just took We what, didn't either at first. No, I think they took what the author, the author said. They cherry-picked a comment that supported their bias. 
they ran with it. They threw it in an article with some other other biased quote. And this happens all the time. I mean, it does. But uh, you know, the fact they had to change the name too. Uh, to to you know, fandom can be a lot like high school. Don't call them toxic fans. Actually, that's how I found the article. I was like, let's go out and look for news on toxic fandom because I guarantee you there are more well, hit what, pieces. What, what crap's going on today? And that's how I found the article. And you yeah. know, I'm I'm just saying, it, you you can buy this, and and I would not worry about buying it. Um, like I said, you could you can always look at it first, and if you yeah. don't think it's something for you, you don't have to buy it. But uh, it's ten dollars. It's a little high. It's ten dollars for the uh, Kindle, and it's like eighteen for the the paperback. Print. Yeah. yeah. Now the weird thing is, people are already selling new and used books of this. It only came out on May the fourth. That was weird. So I thought that was weird. It came out on May the fourth. Um, but you know, or ask your library to get it. Yeah. Um, I should have bought the the paperback version and gave it to the library. I never even thought of that. This is this is definitely a book made for librarians. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm, just gonna, I'm just gonna put it out there. I, I, I might even book. go back and buy the other copy and take and give it to the library. I, I don't think it's a bad book, guys. I don't. I mean, you might find things that you don't like, and you don't have to agree with everything in it. But overall, the it, it is not made to. It's not. They don't even mention toxic fandoms. They just tell you here's how you join a fandom and not be a jerk. That being said, don't harass kids either. No, and I think it's good that they actually said, you know, if you're you're coming into a new fandom, you know, listen first and, you know, ask questions and not come in and be like, hey, I know everything about everything because well, I watched one movie. It's not even that. It's like, well, you didn't <laughs> like what I like, so it's because you're a bad person. And, yeah. and and I think that's more a generational thing. I think yeah. that's more yeah. what you're we're seeing in schools now um, and in these art groups, especially like on these art, um, like some of these different things. Like I know our daughter's on a couple and I worry about it. We have to watch it because. Oh, Amino. Yeah, yeah, because some of those places are very you know indoctrinated toxic and you know i'm for you know people being people being who they are and having rights and that. I, I have no problem with that what you have a problem with is when you're telling kids that if you don't stand up for this or if you don't agree with this you're a shitty person and you better go out there and be an activist too or you, you know silence is violence and all that crap no i don't agree with that and i, I wish they would stop putting kids in that position but uh this is not a bad book like i said if you're a parent or you have nieces or nephews, or you're the adult, older adult guardian, or older adult in the family. And they even say, maybe it's your aunt and uncle, maybe it's somebody else that's yeah. going to take you. It's fine to buy it. Like I said, buy it and look at it. And if you don't like it, then, you know, don't give it to the kids. But I don't think it's bad, guys. I really don't. And I want to make sure we did a video to clarify that and say that because credit where credit's due. And I won't, I won't bash somebody just for the sake of bashing them. If they don't deserve it, they're not going to get it from me. And, and if something's good, I'm going to say it's good. And I think this was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Um, so just, uh, you know, again, we, we're, we try to be fair here on Clownfish TV. I know a lot of people get mad at us because they're like, eh, you've got your hot takes. We try to be fair. I mm -hmm. mean, we get angry about a lot of stuff, mostly because we're watching things that we grew up with get destroyed. And it's not just that they're getting destroyed, it's that there are toxic elements of the fandom in the medium, the media that, that you know, waves it in your face. Like, look, we're you, taking your things and we're breaking your toys. I think if you could take a lot of that out, there wouldn't be half the issues no. that we're having um, on, on the, both extremes or anybody caught in the middle. We, uh, the media causes so much pro trouble. They really do. And the case in point. This is a, this is a case in point. This is a, this is a writer that had a bias that wanted to stick it to the the old school fans and use this book unfairly mm -hmm. to to do that. Um, and, yeah, I mean, so. and, and at the end of the day, I think there's more in common than there aren't. There isn't in common, and everybody keeps wanting to focus on what's not in common. Um, but I just want to make sure that we did another video very clearly telling you what we think about the book after we read it because I didn't want to leave it with the other video even though the other video mostly talked about what we've seen in the fandom and the toxic yeah, bullshit yeah. and how a lot of toxicity does come from these younger people I'm not going to say all of it because I thought that wouldn't be fair but a lot of it does tend to come from that we always get when we get hate letters and death threats it's usually from these Teenagers. younger you know, cartoon yeah. stands but um it's, I just wanted to clarify this because I thought it, I, I needed to make sure we, we covered it and we talked about it and told people, no, this is not what they, how it's being presented. And it's actually pretty well done and we would buy it for our kids. All right. So we're going to wrap it up. Yep. Uh, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.